Hello and welcome my dear students. Today we are going to start second lesson of our English textbook. The name of the lesson is the All American Slur. Now as the name indicates, this lesson talks about American culture. Now the word slur, slur means to drink noisily. When we drink something, make a noise that is called as slur. This lesson is written by Lancy Namueka. Now first, I'll introduce you to the lesson. In your textbook, there is a warm-up activity. And they have asked you to name the food item which you eat during the different times of the day. It's what you eat for breakfast, what you eat for lunch and what you eat for dinner. As everybody's choice is different, your likings are different, so this activity has to be done by yourself. Now this story talks about the preferences, food choices and different lifestyle of different people. People living in different parts have different culture. They have different dressing sense, they have different uh, food and they have different culture. Their lifestyle is different. See if you go in uh, Kerala, the food and dressing sense in Kerala is different and if you go in Punjab, their food habits and dressing sense is different. So if you go in any other state or any other part of the world, you will find these differences. The differences regarding their culture, regarding their food, regarding their dressing sense. So all these cultures, their lifestyle is different for everyone in each and every part of the world. So this lesson talks about different culture of America and China. Before starting the lesson, let me introduce you to the narrator or to the author of this story. This story is written by Nancy Nemoeka. She is a female writer. She was born in 1929 in Beijing in China. So she was a Chinese lady. Her family migrated from China to USA when she was nine years old. She has written several books for children as well as adults. Her books have also won many awards. So she has received many awards for her works. Ties that blind, ties that break. White Serpent Castle and the third and her impossible family are some of her popular works. Let's read out the story and see how the narrator feels towards her own culture that is Chinese culture and that of the West that is American culture. Over trivial matters such as table manners. Trivial means of less importance or you can say insignificant over table manners. Table manners, already you have learned table manners in your lower classes, right? So the manners which we follow when we eat on the dining table. So that is called as table manners. In this lesson, the narrator is going to share some of the issues which she had faced at the table. So let's see the first paragraph. I'll read out the first paragraph. 
and then I'll explain it to you. The first time our family was invited out to dinner in America, we disgraced ourselves. So now here, the writer is sharing her experience when her family was invited for dinner in America for the first time. Actually, they were from China and they shifted to America and for the first time in America, they were invited for dinner. And at that time, they were disgraced ourselves. Disgraced ourselves means brought shame on ourselves. They felt ashamed of themselves. While eating celery. Now, when they were served celery. Celery is a vegetable with an edible stock. Edible means which you can eat. And uh, stock means a thin, long stem. So, when they were served celery, raw, it was served raw. And they had never eaten raw celery. And because of that, they felt shame on themselves. We had immigrated to this country from China and during our early days here, we had a hard time with American table manners. So now, they were shifted, immigrated. Immigrated means went to live permanently in a foreign country. So from China, the author's family went to live permanently in America. And when they went there, so in the beginning, they had a very hard time to adjust with the table manners of America. They could not cope up with the table manners. They faced a lot of difficulties at table manners. Second para. In China, we never ate celery raw or any other kind of vegetable raw. We always had to disinfect the vegetable in boiling water first. When we were presented with our first relish tray, the raw celery caught us unprepared. So in China, they never ate celery raw. Raw, uncooked. So before that they had never eaten raw celery always had to disinfect the vegetable in boiling water first so what these chinese people did they always had to disinfect disinfect means clean so they had to clean the celery by boiling it so first they used to boil it to clean it and then they used to eat that they had never eaten it uncooked. When we were presented with our first relish tray, the raw celery caught us unprepared. So for the first time, when they were presented, when they were given uh, the relish tray, at that time, they were unprepared. They did not know how to eat. Relish means a dipping sauce made of vegetable, vinegar and spices so when they were served a sauce made of vegetable vinegar and spices along with celeries they did not know what to do with it and so they were unprepared for it so let's let's move to the next paragraph we had been invited to dinner by our neighbors the gleasons so they were invited by their neighbors. Who were their neighbors? Gleasons. So Gleasons invited them for dinner. After arriving at the house, we shook hands with our hosts and packed ourselves into a sofa. So after arriving at the neighbor's house, they shook hands with their host. Shook 
it is a verb which is a past tense of shake so they shook hands with their host host means one who arranges the program or any function so who was the host here glissens so after shaking the hands they sat on the sofa as our family of four sat stiffly in a row my younger brother and i stole glances at our parents for a clue as to what to do next so the family of four sat stiffly on the sofa stiffly to be unable to breathe or you can say very congested they were feeling suffocated because it was a small sofa and they hardly adjusted themselves on that sofa so after sitting there the writer and her brother they stole glances to steal glances means to look quickly at someone so they looked quickly at their parents for the clue clue means hint they wanted some hint as to what to do next because they were not knowing what to do now after sitting on the sofa what to do next they were not knowing so quickly they looked at their parents mrs cleesons offered the relish tray to mother the tray looked pretty with its tiny red radishes curly sticks of carrots and long slender stalks of pale green celery so when they sat on the sofa uh, mrs gleesons she offered them a relish tray so what was there in that tray tiny red radishes tiny means small so there were small red radishes then curly sticks of carrots a long slender stalk of pale green celery and there was also a long slender stalk so stalk means a very long and thin part of a plant uh, and it was pale pale means light light green color slender means thin so there were so many things in the tray that the tray looked very pretty very attractive do try some of the celery mrs lin she said so mrs gleeson said to mrs lin to try some of the celery it's from a local farmer and it is sweet she also further said that it was from the local market and the celery was very sweet so she insisted mrs lin to try it mother picked up one of the green stalks and father followed suit so when mrs gleeson served the tray and insisted to take the celery mother picked up one of the green stalks and father followed the suit followed the suit means he also did the same thing he also picked up the celery stalk then i picked up a stalk and my brother did too so after father the narrator picked up the stalk after that her brother also picked up the stalk so one by one everyone from the family picked up the stalk of celery so there we sat each with a stalk of celery in our right hand so each of them means parents writer and her brother each of them had a stalk of celery in their right hand mrs gleeson kept smiling would you like to try some of the dip mrs lin so mrs gleeson she kept on smiling she was serving the guest and she kept, there was a smile on her face and then Uh, she asked would you like to try some of the dip mrs lin so she asked mrs lin if she would like to try some of the dip dip means a thick sauce so she asked if she would like to try the sauce 
uh, it's my own recipe sour cream and onion flakes with a dash of tabasco sauce so mrs gleason said that it was her own recipe she had prepared it herself and uh, it had sour cream and onion flakes sour you know sour taste like of lemon so it it was a sour cream with onion flakes flakes means thin slices so it had thin slices of onion in it and with a dash of tabasco sauce with a dash dash means a little amount so with a little amount of tabasco sauce tabasco is a pungent sauce a sauce which has a pungent taste okay so let's move to next paragraph most chinese don't care for dairy products and in those days i wasn't even ready to drink fresh milk now most of the ch uh, chinese people they don't like dairy products dairy products products which are made of milk so they don't like these dairy products i wasn't even ready to drink fresh milk so the writer lency was not ready to even drink the fresh milk sour cream sounded perfectly revolting so this sour cream it sounded perfectly revolting revolting means disgusting so it sounded very disgusting she did not like the sour cream a family shook our heads in unison so the family of four they shook their head in unison unison means simultaneously simultaneously all the four shook their heads mrs gleason went off with the relish tray to other guests and we carefully watched to see what they did so now after serving mrs lee and her family mrs gleason's went off went off means to go forth to move ahead she went ahead to serve the other guests so by that time these four they waited and they watched what the other guest did with that celery because it was for the first time they were served raw celery and they did not know how to eat that so they wanted to see what the other guests are doing with that celery everyone seemed to eat the raw vegetables quite happily so when they observed other guests they saw that all the guests were enjoying they were eating the raw vegetables very happily they were quite happy to eat the raw vegetables mother took a bite of her celery crunch it's not bad she whispered so mother took a bite of her celery and it made a crunch sound and she said that it's not bad she whispered whispered means to speak in a low voice in somebody's ear so that nobody could hear it okay so she said that the celery was not bad father took a bite of his celery crunch yes it is good he said looking surprised so our first mother took the bite of celery and when she said that it was not bad then father took bite of his celery and he was also surprised that the celery tasted good i took a bite and then my brother crunch crunch so after father the writer lency took the bite of her celery and later on her brother also took the bite of celery and they made crunch sound it was more than good and it was delicious so the celery was very delicious they had eaten the raw celery for the first time and it tasted very delicious it was yummy 
Raw celery has a slight sparkle and a jingy taste that you don't get in cooked celery. So this raw celery had a, some sort of sparkle in it and a jingy taste. Jingy means a tangy taste, a little bit sour type of taste, like taste of a lemon. And uh, it was uh, better than the cooked celery which the writer and her family used to eat. When Mrs. Gleason's came around with the relish tray, we each took another stock of celery except my brother, he took two. So after serving the other guests, again Mrs. Gleason's came to Lancy and her family. So when she came to them, they uh, took one one stock of celery except Lancy's brother, he took two stalks of celery. There was only one problem. Long strings ran through the length of the stalks and they got caught in my tea. So the celery was very delicious, it was very tasty but there was only one problem in it. What was that problem? Long strings ran through the length of stalk and they caught in my tea. So a long string, string means long strong material like very thin rope. So there was a long strong material like a rope to that celery which got stuck in Lancy's teeth. When I help my mother in the kitchen, I always pull the strings out before slicing celery. So wherever Lancy used to help her mother in the kitchen, at that time she used to pull this string before slicing, before cutting the celery. She used to pull out the string. I pulled the strings out of my stock. Zip, zip. My brother followed suit. Zip, zip, zip. To my left, my parents were taking care of their own stocks. Zip, zip, zip. So now here, what the writer did, what Lancy did, she tried to pull out the string from the celery and while pulling it, it made some sort of noise like it is a noise so her brother also did the same and her parents were also busy with their celery they were also trying to remove the string or the pull the string from their celery suddenly i realized that there was dead silence except for our zipping so suddenly Lancy realized that there was a dead silence. Dead silence means complete silence. There was complete silence over there. Except the sound of their zipping. Apart from their zipping sound, there was no other sound there. I saw that the eyes of everyone in the room were on our family. So Lancy saw that everyone in the room all the guests they were looking at Lancy and her family their eyes were on Lancy and her family mr and mrs Gleason, their daughter meg who was my friend and their neighbors the battles they were all staring at us as we busily pulled the strings of our celery so she observed that Mr. and Mrs. Vincent's, then their daughter, her name was Meg and she was friend of Lancy. She was also staring at them, she was also looking at them. Then their neighbor, the Bedles, they were also looking at Lancy and her family. Why, why they were looking at them? because they were pulling out the string from the celery which made a zipping sound. Zipping means a brief sharp hissing sound. So it made a sharp hissing sound when they pulled the string from the celery and because of that all the guests were staring at them. That wasn't the end of it. Mrs. Gleason announced the dinner was served and invited us to the dining table. Now 
the matter did not end here now mrs gleason invited all of them uh, she said that the dinner was ready and she asked everyone to go to the dining table it was lavishly covered with platters of food but we couldn't see any chairs around the table now the dining table was lavishly covered lavishly means generously mrs gleason was a generous lady and she served many different things all the platters were kept on the table platters a large dishware used for serving food you can say a tray so all the dishes were served in the platter and they were kept on the dining table lancy and her family noticed that there were no chairs around the table so we hopefully carried over some dining chairs and sat down so as there were no chairs around the table lancy and her family they carried their own chairs and they sat down for dinner all the other guests just stood there so all the other guests they were just standing over there near the dining table let's move ahead mrs kleeson bent down and whispered to us this is a buffet dinner you help yourselves to some food and eat in the living room so now mrs gleeson she bent down why she bent down because mrs lean and her family members were sitting on the chair so she bent down and she whispered in the ears that this is this was a buffet system she said that that was a buffet system buffet means a meal consisting of many dishes from which guests help themselves so there are number of dishes served and from that whatever you like you have to take it it is like a self service nobody is going to serve you okay so uh, mrs gleason told mrs lee that it was a buffet system and they have to help themselves they want to take whatever they wanted and then they could go in the living room living room means hall a family bent a retreat back to the sofa as if chased by enemy soldiers so their family bent a retreat retreat means to withdraw quickly so quickly they got up from there and they went to the living room as if the soldiers were chasing them as if the soldiers were behind them to catch them so very quickly they moved into the living room and they sat on the sofa for the rest of the evening too mortified to go back to the dining table i nursed a bit of potato salad on my plate for the rest of the evening too mortified to go back to the dining table a mortified means highly embarrassed so they were so much embarrassed that they were not able to go back to the dining table to take some more food so that much they felt ashamed of themselves i nursed a bit of potato salad on my plate and uh, lancy she nursed nursed means here to help something so she uh, held the potatoes and she took it on her plates so that's all for today the next part of the story will be continued in the next lecture till then stay home stay safe thank you